Hey guys, if you're anything like me, you've got friends who have farms and they grow their own vegetables and then you need to figure out what to do with them. And for me, I've been letting some things sit for a while while I try to just get my life in order and um, so I have a few things that I want to make today. But this first video is going to be about making your own tomato sauce from scratch. Um, so I got these really nice tomatoes and there's even some more um, that I'm not showing here. But um, you can get as detailed as you want with making tomato sauce or you can keep it really simple. Um, usually the only time that I add things to my tomato sauce that aren't just the basic ingredients are when um, I happen to have things that I just kind of want to use but usually I think simple is better and I'm half Italian so I cook really well and then I'm half Russian so I bake really well um, it just kind of is part of me but I have also read a lot of recipes over the years and watched a lot of videos and kind of gotten a feel for the bones of recipes um, and just an idea of how to throw things in a pot and how to make them into a thing that you want to use. So um, the process is pretty simple, albeit time consuming. Um, the first thing that I do with tomatoes when I get them is I want to get the skin off. So I take these stems off and then I flash boil the tomatoes in a big pot to get the skin to split so that it's easy to peel off. And I'll show you that in a minute. I have here this big sauce pot and I like to um, flash boil my tomatoes in this pot. You can see it has a lid that has a little hole to let some steam out so that the lid doesn't pop, like, pop off of this pot once it gets boiling. Um, I put this on here just to make it boil a little bit faster. It doesn't need to have that hole, but it's really nice for things like steaming. This doubles as a steamer. Um, and I like, especially if I've got a lot of tomatoes to use this because I can fit them all in at once and it's just really handy. If you only have a smaller pot, you can just do batches. It just takes longer. So I've set my, my sauce pot on the stove to boil on high. Um, I filled it to about halfway because it just needs to be enough to cover the tomatoes. So when you put the tomatoes in, they're going to sink to the bottom. But when you flash boil them, they should start to come to the top and you'll be able to see in the skin when they split. Now, I'm not going to bother to wash the tomatoes because I'm going to throw them into a pot of boiling water and they're not super filthy anyway. So any... Um, unclean things or bacteria or um, parasites should get totally murdered when we boil these. So you don't need to take any extra trouble to do that unless you're somebody who really likes to do that. That's okay. Um, the idea of flash boiling them is definitely not to cook them. They of course will get a little bit cooked but it is solely to split off the skin so that you can peel it really easily. My water for the tomatoes is at a rolling boil, it's a hard boil, and that's good because you want to get the tomatoes in and out as quickly as possible. So I'm just going to drop them in. And so they're all, you can't see them, but they're sinking to the bottom. And I don't need to put the lid on them, they should only take like maybe two minutes maybe three, but again, you don't want to cook them, so you want this to be as quickly as possible. And then when you take them out, you're going to basically dump them into a colander, because then they're going to have to cool. Um, a good thing to do is run some cold water over them so they stop cooking, um, because you don't want them to be really soggy, because um, you're going to get the skins off after that. You may have to wait maybe... I don't know, an hour or two before they're comfortable enough to peel because when they're out of the water, they're going to be really, really piping hot. And since you don't want to burn your fingers, it's better to maybe wait a little while until they've cooled off. As you can see here, 
I've taken the tomatoes out of the water and I put them in the colander. I actually use a spoon to fish them out because they were all sort of done at different times. And you can tell they're done because the skin is going to have this telltale split on it. Hopefully you've got enough light to see that. Um, but when that cools off, it's just going to peel right away. Um, it actually will peel away now, but it's really very hot. So I'm going to wait a little while for that to cool. Um, then, once I have peeled all those away, I can start to actually cut up the tomatoes and get them ready to put in the pot. And look how beautifully um, these just come right off. See? It's like the skin of the tomato should all just peel right away like butter. And you don't want any of that left because it's not a big deal to leave it in the sauce, but it's just, you're going to know it's there. Might as well take it off, it's pretty easy. So now hopefully you can see I've peeled all of the skin off of the tomatoes. Um, and all that's left is their watery insides. And the next thing that I need to do is I usually cut them, like I dice them or cut them in, in fours. Um, sometimes if you're like super into it, you can pull the seeds out and actually discard them or compost them instead of using them. Um, I'm just not that pretentious about it. I don't actually, I've done it both ways and I don't really feel like it makes a whole lot of difference to have the seeds or not. Um, it looks a little bit different, but I think it's fine. Um, so I just cut them up and I get as much of the juice and the meat of the tomato into the pot. Um, I'm going to be using a cast iron because I love cast iron. It's just the best thing to cook with. Cooking with cast iron actually um, gets some of that iron that the pot is made of into the food that you make. So it's a really good way to get some extra iron. Um, the other thing about it is um, things tend to cook more evenly in cast iron because of the way that iron heats. and. I just think the food tastes better because this pot has been seasoned by all the other things that I cook in it. Um, so you have like a little bit of a, a pre-seasoning to whatever you cook in this. I make everything in this. Pizza, I make eggs, I make meat in this. Every single thing that I make are in these pots. This is kind of a medium sized one. Uh, it should be big enough to make mm, a batch or two of sauce. Before I get these tomatoes into the cast iron pan, there's a couple ingredients that I'm going to be putting into the sauce. Um, you've got to have, you got to have some basil, but I don't have any fresh basil. That's of course the best. That would be what I would be using is some fresh chopped basil if I had it. But the next runner up is the dried kind. So I'll put in mm, probably like two tablespoons worth. It depends on how many tomatoes you've got, but for how many I'm using, I think that maybe two tablespoons will be enough. And I'll be using some fresh crushed garlic. You could totally finely chop the garlic. Um, I just, I have this great um, garlic crushing tool. This thing is amazing. It pulverizes everything. And the best part is when you're done crushing, you can just scoop whatever's left off of here and wash it. So this is really great. You put the garlic in here and then you, and then all the stuff comes right out here. And then I usually scrape it off with a knife. And in order to get the full effect, the helpful effects that garlic has, you really want it to be disturbed first. The best thing to do is to crush it and wait a few minutes because that's when all the healthful properties, actually the nutrition comes out of the garlic once it's been crushed. Um, so I usually crush it and just get it into the, the oil and let it sit for a minute before I even heat the oil. So that brings me to the next thing. Um, olive oil. Now, I use probably about two to three tablespoons of olive oil, again, depending on how many tomatoes that I'm using. Um, that's enough to coat the pan and give a little flavor to the sauce. I used to think it was better if you used like a half a cup. You just don't need that much oil. It's really just for 
greasing the pan and just a little bit of flavoring. The tomatoes really do the rest. Um, so garlic, basil, and tomatoes. That's the bones. That's it. That's all you need for a delicious tomato sauce. Um, but if you're feeling creative and you want to add extra spices because you like those flavors or you're just trying to experiment, sometimes like I had zucchini and I added some chopped zucchini and it was fine. It was good. Um, but still, I always come back to just the bones because tomatoes and garlic and olive oil and basil, you really just don't need more. It's delicious. So I'm going to get my garlic crushed and I'm going to get a couple tablespoons of olive oil into the pan. That's what it's going to look like when you get your herbs. I actually add a little thyme to the basil and you can see some crushed garlic in there and some olive oil and it's been sitting for a minute or two just to get the helpful properties of the garlic out. I'm going to add um, the tomatoes in but first I'm going to turn the heat on real low. I'm going to turn it on in like level three and I'm just gonna give it maybe a minute or two at a warm temperature for the oil to absorb some of the tastes of the herbs that you put in there and then after that I'll go ahead and add in the chopped tomatoes. Okay here I have put the tomatoes into the pan, the cast iron pan that has all the herbs and I even chopped an extra couple of cloves of garlic and put it in there because my garlic is so fresh. Um, it's almost, it just doesn't have that pungent flavor that we're used to with store-bought garlic. So I added some extra. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the heat up to about 5. That's probably a medium on most stoves. And then I'm going to put a lid back on it and I'm going to let it simmer for... I don't know, maybe a minute or two till it gets pretty bubbly. And then once it gets super bubbly, I'm going to turn it back down to three, like a medium low. And then I'm just going to let it sit for a while. Give it a stir and let it sit. See how sizzly bubbly that is? That's what you want. So now I'm going to turn it down to around three, that medium low I just talked about. Um, because I do want it to continue to bubble a little bit, but I also don't want to burn it. So I'm just going to leave it simmer low and slow probably like 20-30 minutes should do the trick. So look how much water is coming off of that the tomato mixture that I put in there. That's great. You want that. Now I've had the lid on this whole time and I will be keeping it on there because I don't actually want to uncover these tomatoes until you can't really see whole chunks of tomato anymore. I want it to be more of like a paste in there. And then when it looks a little bit more of a paste I'll take that lid off to evaporate some of that water. So right now I'm going to put the lid back on and I'm going to let it cook down even further. So while that's cooking, I just quickly want to show you the mason jars that I like to use. You can usually get these at any like um, cooking stores or any kitchenware stores. Sometimes you can find them uh, in dollar stores even. Um, but I like these because they've got this wide mouth here. That means your whole spoon can go in here. Even if you use the big spoon, there's a lot less opportunity for spilling. You don't need a funnel. Um, these are really nice jars. Now, if you are going to freeze these, which I actually like to um, individually jar soup in these, like different kinds of soup, so I've got ready to go meals, and I do freeze them. And before I'd ever freeze anything that I put in here, I let it cool completely. And then I'll even put it in the refrigerator for a day just to make sure that there's no residual heat in here. Because the contrast of heat and cold in the freezer will crack this glass immediately. But even taking all those precautions, not filling above the fill line and um, making sure everything's really clean... Um, making sure that the lid's screwed on tight but not so tight that you know there's pressure that builds up even doing all of that if your freezer is really cold and sometimes even just because there's a weak point in the glass sometimes these jars will crack when you put them in the freezer I've lost a few mostly not these guys for the most part the ones that I've lost are actually the bigger ones with the 
um, more narrow mouth to them. Those are the ones that seem to crack the most when I put them in the freezer. But they really are the best to jar in, I think. Um, so this is actually what I'm going to be putting my sauce in when it's done. Um, and this will be nice because it'll make a lot of servings. Um, sometimes I have actually shorter ones as well that are just like this. And it's nice because I can make several of them for different months and put them in the freezer and you know I if I think I'm gonna feel like sauce that week I can pull out the smaller jar but I'll still have a jar left in the freezer it's a, a really nice kind of tutorial on portioning out some of the stuff you make it's better I think not to put everything into just one big batch and then freeze it because then when you defrost it you've got to use it all and I think that's where people get sick of whatever it is that they make because they make a lot and then they put it all in the same container and then once you've defrosted it that's it you've got to use it so better to have several containers for that batch so that you can take them out as you want to enjoy them instead of having to force yourself to eat or figure out what to do with this whole big batch of what you've made and then maybe never want to eat it again so at another point I'll make a video on on different ways that you can portion out food and freeze it so that you can consider both um, quantity of what you're eating in a sitting and also um, how much food you're making versus how much you want to have available and ready to go in your refrigerator versus your freezer at any given time. So now we're just waiting for the sauce to be finished and once it's looking like it's Ready to take the lid off? I'll come back and get you. You can see how much the tomatoes have now cooked down. Um, this is great. This is what you want to see. See all that water has cooked off and when you scrape it, it holds its form away from the pan. So it doesn't really quickly just become a puddle. It takes a minute for that liquid to come back out and fill that hole, which is what you want to see. So I've taken the lid off. I'm keeping it off. I'm probably going to cook it for maybe another, oh, five minutes at the low, medium low, um, which is about three for me. And then once some of this liquid has kind of come off and it's just this paste here, that's when... I'm going to turn off the heat and I'm going to put the sauce that's in here into that jar. Okay, I've cooked off all the water so you can see it's like totally staying into its own like puddle um, or pile I should say. Now I'm going to go and scoop it into a jar. So check that out. That's my sauce. All those tomatoes really didn't make very much, did it? But it's going to be delicious and I think It'll probably amount to like, oh, for me, I usually use like a tablespoon of serving, maybe two. So this is probably maybe a cup and a half worth of uh, sauce here because this is kind of a big jar. So that's a good, decent amount. And I already have some in the freezer. So I'm going to let this jar completely cool because it's very hot to the touch. So I'll leave it out overnight. And then I'll put it in the refrigerator for at least two or three hours to make sure it's completely cool. And I'll toss this into the freezer or maybe I'll give it away. And it makes a great gift. Um, one thing that I think is really important to say about things like tomato sauce or even I made another video about candied onions, um, especially with the case of tomato sauce, this would have been peasant food for Italians. This was um, what peasants would have made just from whatever was growing in their garden, whatever they had around the house. Um, it was with the freshest ingredients, and that's why people recognized it as so delicious. But it was never really meant to be a fancy food. It's, it's a rustic kind of uh, everything in the kitchen sink sort of food. It's simple. Some people like to add a little salt to cut that sweetness. I don't do that. 
I just think it's beautiful like it is. It doesn't really need very much else, in my opinion. Uh, super tasty. You could put this over pasta. You could put it on a meatloaf. You could put it with roasted vegetables. You could even roast vegetables in it. I've done that. Throw some cheese on top. Make like a casserole. I make it. I use this for pizza because it's basically pizza sauce too. Um, but you can totally smell in the air that familiar aroma of uh, hot tomato sauce. And uh, it doesn't really take much. It's pretty easy. All you really have to do is chop it all up and just put it in a pan wait and wait and wait and stir um, and then you have this really nice sauce and especially for me I'm in Washington I'm in the Pacific Northwest and in the summers there's so much fresh produce I just don't even know what to do with it all so sauce is a really wonderful thing you can do you could jar it you could put it in the freezer you could like I said give it away um, you can have it fresh you can save it it's just so versatile. Um, you can even add things to it, which I didn't do. But that's the bones, and I hope that it's easy enough for you to follow that you can make your own sauce. And if you enjoyed my instruction, please give this video a like.